Ah, yes. Pokemon Crystal. I, I, I really like these carts. Uh, they're, they're useful for a number of things, but the most important feature is that they look just freaking badass here. Um, you can pick up these carts, import them from Japan. They're not nearly as cheap as they used to be, um, but you still get them for less than 10 bucks if you're patient and shop around. Um, but unfortunately, for those like me, they are not quite in English. Yeah. Not a whole lot can be done about that without actually modifying the cart itself. Uh, if you want to play a game in a different other, in another language, there's your opportunity. Uh, but I want to see if I can't make one of these bad boys. So this is a custom flash cart PCB designed by my buddy HDR here. Uh, he actually sent me this flash this PCB to try and test out. He's been trying to get them assembled, but he hasn't been having any luck and. Well, quite frankly, a lot of people are waiting on these, and um, they haven't ordered them yet because we don't know if they're functional, because no one's got one working yet. So, let's see if I can't get that remedied. Uh, hopefully, nothing goes terribly wrong, because this is literally the only PCB that I have. My uh, only other PCBs are... Uh, well, that's something completely different. Um, oh, here it is. The only other PCB is this one right here, which this is a version 1.2. We know that doesn't work. This is a version 1.3. It has some changes. Let's see if we can't get that fixed. Now, the biggest difference between these two versions, let me pick that up again. This one uses um, a different OR gate from the uh, MBC3 carts, which is the other version of this flash cart here, whereas this one uses the uh, gate straight off the actual PCB for this game here. So maybe that's the difference between saves. Uh, I think there are a couple other little changes, but I'm not quite sure what, to be honest. So let's try it out and see what happens. Now, instead of taking this cart apart and desoldering parts, I've already actually taken the liberty of doing that with another game here. The only parts I salvaged off this board are the MBC30 chip, the uh, SRAM man power management chip, and the uh, little OR gate that this PCB comes with. And i uh, got those right here. Now, the biggest difference between... Okay, let me, let me start off. Just a quick technical insight on this chip I have in my hand here. This is, go ahead and focus. This is an MBC30, so MBC30 chip. This is different than the MBC3 chip. Um, I'm not sure how in-depth the, uh, the documentation gets on these, but the only game that actually uses this chip is the Japanese version of Crystal. The US version of Crystal, or the international versions of Crystal, use a regular MBC3, not 30. So, who knows what specific differences there are. Unfortunately, the pinout between the 30 and the 3 are completely different, so it's not like we can't take this chip and then pop a 3 on there so that we're not making that PCB useless. There's, unfortunately, it's done for. That's it. Um, but one of the things that the MBC30 chip can do that the 3 cannot is the 30 can support twice as much uh, memory, basically. So it supports 256k saves and uh, up to 4 megabytes of ROM, whereas the MBC3 only supports 2 megabytes of ROM and 128k, I believe. Don't quote me on that one. And uh, even though we're not using SRAM in this PCB, we still have to use this power management chip for the real-time clock functionality. So uh, let's get started. Now, this is going to be a long process, lots of soldering from me here. Let's see if I can't get a better angle on this.
Now, I have assembled a couple of these boards before. Uh, well, the MBC3 version, at least. And assembly on this one is pretty much the same thing. But it helps if you have some solder. up the tip. Bigger to gob, better to job, something like that. Now I haven't even gotten this thing assembled and I do already have some uh, revisions in mind. Namely, I'm thinking for the next version, the components that we can transfer over should be named the same. So in this particular case, U5 over here is U2 on this board. Um, R3 is R1 over here. Stuff like that. And it just makes it just makes salvaging parts a little bit easier instead of having to do everything fresh, you know. And I'm probably not even going to solder every component down. Now, this is directional, but pretty easy to figure out because there's only two pins on one side and three pins on the other side. I think that's soldered down. Now it is. There we go. All right, now let's solder the MBC30 chip. On this chip, technically it goes upside down. Oops. As in pin one is in the bottom left here. Usually pin one is in the top right, but just the circle bottom left, circle bottom left. The text should be upright. Ooh, shoot. There we go. It's a little bit crooked, but I think we'll live. I have to clean up some shorts. Now this is absolutely a prototype cart as well. Uh, the actual carts, which I'm not selling and I don't know if HDR is going to be selling either. I don't know if anyone's going to sell them. Um, but if you want to make one yourself, you should do um, gold plating. Whereas these are just hot, hot air solder finishing. The reason being, this will work temporarily, at the very least, for testing, which is all we need it to do. But the reason you want the gold finish instead of the hot air solder is because uh, solder tends to oxidize, and the oxide layer of solder is non-conductive. And uh, physical wear and tear on solder, such as on the cart edge connector, will significantly speed up that process of oxidation. And like I said, the oxide layer is non-conductive, and 
unfortunately one extra property of that is that um, the oxide layer can end up rubbing off on the cart connector of your Game Boy itself which would mean that it's going to have problems reading any games, not just this one. I'm having a hard time with this, but I'll move on, come back to it. stuff like this happens, I always wonder, you know, is it my technique? Is it the tip? Is it the solder? You know, what am I doing wrong? Because I see other people, they're just able to drag the solder ball along. See, that one went smooth. But I just have this massive short up here. It is not going away. That got it. So I guess what I lack in technique I can make up for in desoldering braid. Ugh, come on. One of the things I don't like about this liquid flux either is that it just it fucks off so quick on you. <sighs> Alright, so that's two sides done. That is three sides done. And if this cart doesn't work, by the way, I can always just desolder these chips and solder them back on to something else. It's not the end of the world. See, I can move this solder ball around, I just can't remove it. Whatever. I'll just soak it up with the breeze. Here we go. Clean up those solder joints. And I think that thing is soldered down now. A little crusty. That's just flux. I'll clean that up later. All right. Solder on the crystal here. This is also salvaged. I desoldered this one. I desoldered the battery. 
I used hot air uh, to desolder the uh, chips and stuff and uh, these crystals and the battery do not handle hot air so well so just did those first can use a new crystal as well it's nothing proprietary all right now we need fram chip and the rom chip fram i'm going to try and make my life simpler by using the last one in my known good batch or at least i built two other parts with chips from this batch and they all worked so this one should too hopefully the uh notch cut out come on there we go right up here on the top that is goes right up here on the top here just got to line it up so that if you're holding the board 90 degrees 90 degrees counterclockwise text should be facing you basically it should be 180 degrees for the text on the board um if i make a new revision of this board i We'll probably end up flipping that around even though it's like that on the uh, official boards as well I don't know it just it seems backwards to me anyway get a whole bunch of flux all up in here I suppose I can bring that down too huh Done. Nice and slow. That way, give the joint enough time to soak up the heat to actually flow the solder properly. There we go. That's probably the easiest chip to solder. On this thing, at least. Alright, last but not least, as far as the big chips go, we're going to solder on the flash memory chip. Now, this board will work with the 2 megabyte chips as well as the 4 megabyte chips, but if you're building an MBC30 board, there's no point in not using a 4 megabyte chip unless you just really, really dig the, uh, the case layout here. 
So I've got in here a chip that I already went ahead and pre-flashed. Uh, in this particular case, these are MBM 29 FO33C chips, but AM 29 FO32B chips as work as well. So if that'll focus, maybe we need the light. It's probably going to be hard to tell because I wrote on this anyway. Yeah, it's right there, but it's really hard to see anyway. Whatever. Uh, the uh, dot top left here. Same thing. And now the footprint on this particular cart oopsie doodle, has these extra big pads off to the four corners. So the four megabyte chips just sit in between the two pads. The two megabyte chips will, uh, you just solder the last two legs and short them out. It's fine. They're, they're NC anyway. And just as an example, nope, I don't have any chips handy. Never mind. All right. Flux this bad boy up. Clean off my iron. Get some fresh solder on here. And uh, let's get it on. I'm just going to line up one side. Tack down the corner. I don't really care that those are shorted, just that it's not going to move much. Flip it over, line up the other side. And solder it down. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Mm, looks good to, uh, to my eye there. That side looks good too. So at this point, it's probably good enough to test, but, uh, just to cover all my bases here, I'm gonna try and add some of these surface mount components as well. So, like I said, the, uh, I'm gonna flip this up. Get my other light on here so I can see a little bit better. Um, like I said, not all these components are labeled the same. So on the donor board, we have C1 and C2. These go to the crystal here. Over my flux again. As you can see, top of this one goes to this pad, top of this one goes to this pad, 
and that's the same for these two crystals here. Actually, it looks like they're just shorted together. That doesn't seem right. Hmm. Well, nonetheless, let's try it out. So there is a full bill of materials on the GitHub page. And these two crystals should be 15 picofarad or 15 pf. But, or crystals, capacitors. A little messy, but it'll work. Oh, whoops, that's why those are shorted together. One of those is a resistor. I wasn't, the order of these three components is different. So on this one, from top to bottom, we have capacitor, capacitor, resistor. On this one, we have resistor, capacitor, capacitor. Never mind. Ooh. Okay. And the surface tension, what I was doing right there, uh, I was just wetting both sides at the same time, and the surface tension between the flux and the solder was just pulling the capacitor into the center of the pads. Neat little trick I learned a little while back. All right, so R1, according to the Bill of Materials, is supposed to be a 330K resistor, which I don't know if I have handy. Hopefully I got one of those in my bag of tricks here. That is not that. That is also not that. I don't have a 330k resistor. That's fine. Um, R3 is 1k, which is this one here, 1001, which is also this resistor here. Now, you probably can't see that on camera, or maybe you can, but it should say 102. I had a hard enough time seeing it myself. Hang on. I ended up taking a picture. I'll just zoom that in. You can see that clearly on there. It's 102, uh, which should be the same as my 1001 resistors I have. I forget the uh, codes. So let's check it out. Yeah, that's 1K. Oh, wow. <laughs> it said right on the back there. Duh. Okay. I'm going to actually reuse this one. Just because I can. What was that? R3, I think. Yeah. 
it's right there. So it's the same position physically on the cart, just, well, mostly. It's a different designation. That was completely out of focus. I'm sorry. All right, what do we got left? R1, R2, and then a bunch of capacitors. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five capacitors. We'll just use these rather than trying to transfer over more. I don't mind reusing the resistors those are at least labeled, but the capacitors always make me nervous, because I don't have a way of, because they're not marked, and I don't have a capacitance meter to check them. And even if I did, the meter I would probably end up buying probably can't even test something like 0 0.01 microfarad. Ooh, that's a big solder ball. There we go. Just get these soldered down. that later. Sure, that one's soldered down. There it goes. The only danger with trying to get both sides of this thing simultaneously is that sometimes the iron just sucks it up. <laughs> like what just happened. When it works, it works nicely though. It really cleans up the visual appearance of these things. All right. Got to find two more resistors. So probably going to have to pause for a moment. Um, R2 10K. No, I have a 10K resistor. We can do that one real quick. Ta -da. I can't pull. Where the heck are my flush cutters? I left them in the drawer. I can't pull the resistor from the donor cart because that's not 10K. It's also not 330K, so I'm not 100% sure how necessary these are since the original cart didn't even come with them. I think they're just holdovers from uh, the MBC3 flash cart, which this PCB is based off of. Oh, and that's also 
way the wrong size. Whatever, I'll make it work. All right, this is 10K, which makes it R2. So it goes right there. Alright, so I went ahead and cleaned it up, and I'm not going to bother with this resistor for now, uh, just because this is part of the real-time clock circuit, and I already know RTC works. Uh, the What we want to test in particular is if saving works. Um, now, good news, bad news, I have already tested this out, and it's not going to work, unfortunately. And I'm fairly confident it's nothing with my soldering, uh, but I mean, it does look pretty sweet, though. Uh, I even, I even had a label for it and everything, but no, it's not going to work. And um, I only found one game that actually even boots, one Pokemon game that actually even boots, and that is Crystal Kaizo. Um, crystal Clear, Gold, Silver, Crystal, those won't boot. The problem is, uh, as you can see, there was no save on the game. Um, Problem is the game's not interacting with the FRAM. And I don't know what the specific problem is. But this was the only game that I could even get to boot. Um, I did run my test ROM on this thing. Uh, the one that I did on the original cart that I made this one here. And that does boot, that does work. It shows that all four megabytes of the chip are accessible. But anything more complex than that seems to be having some issues here. So just as an example, when I go to save, the game's going to crash and reboot. But the interesting thing is that it's rebooting into um, game, original Game Boy mode instead of Game Boy Color mode. So this game is only designed to be used on a Game Boy Color... Well, that's what this is, you dingus. But yeah... Unfortunately, it's not going to work. I tried uh, writing a save to the game and then reading it back, and all I got was an empty file when I did that. So either what that means is either the RAM chip itself that I have soldered in here is bad, or that the um, this just still, there's something wrong with the circuit schematic in here. And unfortunately, I don't know what it might be. Uh, I'm going to do some tinkering, rooting around in the schematic, see if I can't just recreate this board as is, except with the FRAM chip. And I don't know, maybe, maybe there's just some mistake in here that we're not seeing. Uh, but I'll take a look at this. If nothing else, the next, well, I was going to say the next revision of this. Well, no, yeah, that'll work. Uh, the next revision of this will just use the uh, SRAM chip instead of the FRAM chip uh, if we can't get the circuit figured out. But at the very least, you know, we'll get custom art carts going. But, uh, I don't know. I mean, if nothing else, it does still look pretty sweet. But, yeah, unfortunately, we're still at a dead end here. So... I guess that's where I bid you all adieu and thanks for watching. Have a good night.